Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to tonight's program. Uh, my name is Salem Gabil, and I'll be serving as your co-host tonight, along with Carol Inskeep from Urbana Free Library. Um, this program is presented in partnership with Urbana Free Library um, and Cranert Art Museum and co-sponsored by various organizations, um, including Cranert Art Museum, the Urbana Champaign Independent Media Center, the Urbana Free Library, uh, Museum of the Grand Prairie, the College of Fine and Applied Arts at Illinois, and supported in part by the Illinois Arts Council. Um, to give you a little background about the exhibit, um, so in February of this year, Cranert Art Museum, along with campus and community partners, um, issued a call for art for an ex exhibition called Pandemics as a Portal to Change. The call for art sought visual art, creative writing, original music, video, audio, and performance centered on hopeful approaches that creatively imagine what the future could look like. Uh, the exhibition is on view through August 28th in the Hood Classroom, uh, which is located on the lower level of Cranert Art Museum, and it includes 79 works of art submitted by 52 artists, uh, ranging from middle schoolers through seniors, across a range of topics from health, mental health, the environment, racial justice, and community building. Um, tonight, we'll hear from artists who submitted in the creative writing category um, as they share their poetry and creative writing um, and how they found inspiration. Um, tonight's webinar is interactive, um, so if you have questions for the artist, feel free to pop them in the chat or raise your hand and we can unmute you. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first reader. Our first artist sharing their work tonight is Starla Carpenter. Starla, whenever you are ready. Hello. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to share. Hold on just a second. So, um, in about March of this year, um, I I am a writer. I don't I haven't written poetry for a while, but uh, in about March of this year, I um, had a prompt that day, and it was um, "Luck of the Irish," and I happened to go walking in my neighborhood as I did over and over and over again during COVID. Um, and often taking the same route. And I had discovered along the way, this mailbox where some of my neighbors were like rotating the things they put on their, their mailbox. So it was like a little mini exhibit. So it helped cheer up my walk and give me something new to think about or look at sometimes. And um, today, that day, since my writing prompt had been Luck of the Irish, I took special notice because the shamrock was there and also a a big COVID virus with um, a large syringe sticking out of it and at that time the promises of the vaccine it was like oh this could change everything but i was still worried and skeptical i don't want to get my hopes up and um but i but i tried to bring you know a little bit of hope um and, and this mailbox, you know, made me smile and, and think about how to be hopeful. Um, but it also made me think how awkward it would be to actually re-enter society because we had all been so isolated for so long and that it would be a little bit like your first day of school and how awkward that could be. So this poem is very short, but it's called Luck of the Irish. Spring finds me with a lurch as birds tentatively call out, tentatively call out questions, remind me it's been a year. The neighbors balance kitsch on their mailbox, new items every week or so, a novelty for the same old walk I take. COVID-19 is there now, taking the stage it craves, a big styrofoam ball with red push pins, but now a huge syringe vaccinates the hell out of it. We certainly need all the luck we can get. If it works, it will feel like the first day of junior high. There will be no going back, but whoa, I'll stumble back, then forwards, weak arms flailing, 
then I'll pick up speed, throw my mask into the wind, breathe in long and deep, rush into social nearness, hug the first person I find. Thank you. Thank you so much, Starla. Okay, our next uh, artist who will be sharing their work uh, is Deborah Jomal. Deborah, whenever you are ready, I will turn it over to you. Hello. Thank you for um, having me this evening. And I wanted to just say that I'm so sad of how relevant this has still become. When I wrote this book, I had hoped we'd be remembering it and not still living through it. Uh, but I just wanted to say a quick bit about um, what inspired the work. And I, I grew up as the only words person in a family of numbers people. And uh, I felt like we all spoke different languages. And then eventually I came to learn that numbers could tell stories too. Uh, numbers could tell us from an accountant's point of view about um, payroll and inventory and um, viability of a company, but from a cultural standpoint or an emotional standpoint, it could refer to Facebook likes, weight, all these sort of loaded valuations um, in our culture. And um, I wanted to take that into um, a book form thinking about what if the numbers had feelings about all this sort of anthropomorphizing them similar to the work in the, um, in the day the crayons quit. Uh, and I was also inspired by a wonderful book called um, This Is Me, period. It's a small graphic work that talks a lot about um, punctuation and it reveals each form of punctuation uh, by telling the story and the character of each mark. Uh, it's wonderful, it's got typographical um, or punctuation illustration. And that inspired me when I wrote this book uh, to only use illustrations made out of numerical typography. So that was really fun and also really challenging. So um, when COVID hit, I decided that was where I had to focus my number story because I mean, all of us were just glued to our devices and our TVs, staring at numbers and numbers and numbers. So that definitely had to be the first in the series. Um, and I hope it's the last book I write about numbers and COVID. Um, I'm going to play it for you now. Thank you. I'm uh, share my screen. Confessions by Numbers, the coronavirus edition. Written and illustrated by Deborah Domal. Copyright 2020. Dedicated to the number whisperers. Being a number isn't always easy. No one likes to be the bearer of bad news or seem judgmental. Added or subtracted, positive or negative, every number tells a story, if you listen. And though people try to hide them or spin them, numbers count. In the spring of 2020, a relentless virus emerged and suddenly everyone everywhere had their eyes on the numbers all of the time. Were the numbers going up? Were the numbers going down? Cases and tests? and hospital beds, 
numbers of jobs and dreams and lives lost. The numbers grew tired and very, very sad. They feared that they had become nothing but noise or that we had forgotten that each one of those numbers belongs to someone whose life was filled with thousands of numbers and all the stories those numbers tell. The number of freckles and scars, birthdays and locker combinations, phone numbers still remembered, area codes that had once been home, the number of broken hearts and friendships mended, and the number of ways, big and small, that they made this world a better place. By telling these stories, numbers help us remember that there is always strength in numbers. What's your number story? Share or learn more at deboradomal.com. Thanks, Deborah. Worth waiting for. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Thank you so much, Deborah. <laughs> Great. Well, greetings, everybody. My name is Carol, and I'm from Urbana Free Library. And thanks, everybody, for coming. And thank you, Champagne Public, for hosting this. And thank you to all the people who created art and writings for this project. We need art right now, and we need ways to understand what we're going through. So thank you very much. It's, it's really my honor to introduce the next poet. It's, uh, her name is Ashanti Files, and she is the current Poet Laureate of Urbana. She's also a full-time registered nurse, a wife, a mother, and she has a real passion for the ways that poetry and spoken word can help people express themselves and assert themselves. So it's my real pleasure to introduce Ashanti Files. Thank you so much for that introduction, Carol. The title of the poem that I'm going to read that I created for this event is called Hope 2020. I tried to write about hope, but wasn't sure I had the audacity. The pandemic took a toll and our last president was a fascist. He said he did more for Christianity than Jesus. And between the BLM protests and white ring hatred, we just stayed inside and tried to live. Contemplating if student loans would be forgiven to provide a little relief. We were safe at home, but had to march in these streets to the beats of Black Lives Matter. See, I was flattered to be a part of the healthcare heroes until I started telling the truth and the death toll added zeros and zeros and zeros until the number reached 100,000. And still people believed it was a hoax and wouldn't wear masks in public places. The deck was stacked against us and the government held the aces, but they underbid as the death toll continued to rise. But as the number grew, there were fewer tears from the eyes of the privileged because big business needed that money. Propaganda had normal people acting funny, yet still I dared to hope until I couldn't breathe as I choked, as George Floyd choked and his killer walked the streets free. See, we're going back into summer. But instead of George Floyd, the name we will march to is Dante Wright. And we, again, will wear our masks as we continue to fight system of oppression. The National Guards were called and wore bulletproof vests when we said Black Lives Matter. 
but were nowhere to be seen when the right wing unhinged the government seat of power. And the hours continued to tick on and on. 225 deaths, but 600 rent, but excuse me, 525,600 deaths, but rent wasn't on. And the nurses were on the verge of a mental breakdown every day. Saving the lives of the people who claim don't tread on me, yet I say I'm going to write about hope. As a black woman in, in America, it's impossible not to choke on the repetitious contradictions, vaccine versus quarantine things while the scenes are bursting on the national debt. Make $600 enough because it's all you go get as you try to survive this crisis. Going hungry while the nation gets its slices is your patriotic duty. I'm a poet and I know it sounds loony, but I can't write about hope. 2020 had me riding a high worse than dope, and when I came down, it was comparative to death, knowing that nothing would change. So I inhale and take a deep breath and continue to think about hope. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take a breath and take that one in, everybody. Thank you so much, Ashanti. Okay, our next two poets may be young, but they are published poets. Uh, they are both members of the writers group, Writers of Oya, which is uh, a poetry and spoken word group for high school and middle school girls of color. And our first reader is going to be Camille Files, and you can find poetry of Camille's in this little book right here, Unmasked. Thanks for joining us, Camille. Hi, thank you so much. So the, um, the poem I'm going to be reading tonight is called Quarantine Kings. Trump said that he has done more for Christianity than Jesus Christ today, and I think it broke me. I am so tired of everything. If I died right now, people would attend my funeral over Skype. My parents stay debating, my sisters stay complaining, my grandma stays praying over an uncle with an 102 fever. What happens when he leaves her with the virus? Because that's what will happen. They all say rejoice and start clapping. People stay dying, I really stay crying, because the thousands at Clearwater don't realize that my baby sister with her big brown eyes is immunocompromised. And they don't care, they just want to have fun. They don't care that for her it's like staring at a loaded gun. They're on their spring break, and I was on mine, until the whole world became in one mind of fear and misinformation and racism. If someone starts coughing, put a shank in them. So stay forever vigilant, stay paranoid, stay staring into the empty void, stay attacking people because you can't see that it's just us. It's just you and me. Thank you. Camille, I wish we were in a room so we could applaud you and thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. You guys are amazing. Our next poet is Kayla Files. And again, like a young reader with a lot to say and such a powerful way of saying it. Thank you so much for reading tonight, Kayla. No problem. So when do I start doing this? Mm -hmm. okay. This poem is called Dear 2020. Dear 2020, what to say? You suck and ruined my life. I couldn't do anything this year and it was all your fault. The best year of my life, gone, wasted. And yet I love you. You help to show people that black lives do matter and that we can be strong. So 2020, you were the best and worst year ever. Thank you. The end. Thank you so much. So our next artist sharing their work will be uh, Kuldeepa Vartak Mehta. Kuldeepa, whenever you are ready, the floor is yours. Hello, good evening, everybody. And I would really like to thank the library and everybody concerned to put this together. Um, as I was saying the other day, this is like an extension of my writing and of all of us artists and the exhibition that the Krenert has put up. So it makes it more meaningful, I think, when we come together and discuss of the background of creating our art. So thank you so much. 
I will try to share my work. So I am not an, I'm not a writer, I'm not a poet. Uh, the closest I can say after being a mom is an art facilitator. I've been doing projects, uh, creative projects, but I used to write diaries and poems since my college days. And is, is this visible? Is, uh, yes, is yes it is. Okay, that's great. So this, these are just basically sketches, writing sketches that um, I did somewhere in beginning a uh, bit of March when this began. And it goes, well, is it a good sign that I can still see and feel the beauty of the surroundings during these dire times? These are some of my present musings. COVID-19 is what they address it. It's killing humans. Or is it challenging humanity's narrowing grace? Is it questioning our ignorant ways? For unavoidable deaths are giving rise to some new consciousness. It's depressing and sad to see what a single cellular form can do to the most complex so-called intelligent man. But as a hardy optimist and artist and yearning naturalist, I can see positive in nature's every plan. The nature around us is not scared of some writers. It is scared of us, the man. This pandemic might be our chance to rethink and revitalize. It can be an eye opener for those ready to open eyes of how our flamboyant lifestyles and fake, and fake systems are crumbling right in front of our eyes. Isn't it directing us to rethink basics, to wisely resist, holistically reconnect, and then consciously rise? Nature will see as if it has to, or will survive the fate. But in this moment, it's calm and poised. And flowing through it, the stream of vital life. Oh, my mind, my dear friend of mine, Flow, flow with the flow, go where it goes, rising higher where the sun shines, fearlessly clean and bright. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kuldeepa. Thank you. Uh, I want to uh, give a big thanks to all our artists who shared their work tonight. Um, I know that uh, this past year and a half has been challenging for so many people and for all of you to be able to ex express that experience in such a meaningful um, way and creative way um, is, is truly a gift. So thank you for sharing that with us. We really appreciate it. And uh, it's a good reminder to get over to Craner and see this exhibit. Absolutely, while well, you still can. So that's uh, through August 28th um, on the lower level in the Hood classroom. Yeah, and I also want to say thank you to Carol and the Urbana Free Library for co-hosting tonight, um, as well as Cranert Art Museum. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for attending, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the program, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>